Cavalcade of America. Starring Ralph Bellamy in Ryden Shotgun. Presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Good evening, and welcome to Cavalcade. This is Bill Hamilton. Among DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry is DuPont 40 outside white house paint. A house paint that actually washes its own face. That's why it stays white and fresh looking so long. As time goes by, a fine white powder forms on the surface and is washed away by rains, taking dust and dirt with it. And DuPont 40 is durable. It'll protect against rust and decay for a long time. When you plan to have your house painted, ask your painter about DuPont house paint. Available in popular light tints as well as white, paint is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Now, Ryden Shotgun, a story of the Dakota Territory in the 1870s, starring Ralph Bellamy as Scott Davis and featuring Jeanette Nolan as his wife, Dixie. may seem kind of strange to you for a woman to get up and tell the world what a wonderful man her husband was. But on second thought, maybe it's not, on account of who knew him better than his own wife. Scott Davis never did nothing extraordinary. He wasn't what you'd call an empire builder or a railroad king. He was an ordinary man with a terrible hunger deep down inside of him. A hunger for law and order and justice. Law and order, Dixie. They are more important than digging gold. They're more important than everything. Because without them, you get nothing. Nothing at all. Men like Scott Davis who risk their lives to bring law and order to the rest... It's something else in their hearts and getting rich. They had a vision of a peaceful, prosperous America where men walked without fear of desperadoes like the James Boys and Billy the Kid and Duncan Blackburn. I don't see it, Red. This newspaper don't say nothing about it. Take it easy, Blackburn. It's there. It's there. It's got to be in the Deadwood Pioneer. Well, they usually run it on the first page, but... Oh, here it is. Listen. Notice to bullion shippers. The summer cleanup of gold bullion will leave for Cheyenne on the treasure coach at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Uh-huh. Scott Davis will be riding shotgun. Scott Davis, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Blackie, what makes a healthy man take a jump like that? Sitting up there alongside the driver like a duck in a pond? What makes him do it, Blackie? Search me. This Scott Davis... They say he's a handy man with a shotgun. <laughs> we'll find out all about that tomorrow. Huh, Blackie? That same afternoon, there was a rehearsal going on at the Jim Variety Theater and Dance Hall in Deadwood, a few miles away. Chorus line of four girls. One of them was me. It's being drilled in the dance routine by Bill Nichols, the proprietor. All right, Professor, let me have it again. And girls, let's get into this thing like we was just a little interested, huh? All right, Professor. One and two and three. Kick. One and two and three. One. While in a corner of the room... The bartender was standing alongside the only occupied table, talking to a tall, blonde, quiet-looking man. Say, Scotty, here you're riding shotgun on a treasure coach tomorrow. Uh Uh-huh. What's the matter? Don't you like living? It's honest work, ain't it? Somebody's got to keep law and order around here. I, uh, I hear the Blackburn gang's roaming around loose up in the hills. Did you know that? 
me. The man who Wells Fargo told me when he offered me the job. And you took it? Friend, all I can say is you sure take your duty as a citizen serious. Oh, no, 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 not that way. Hold it, Professor. Now, how many times do I have to tell you girls which way is left? Hold it, Professor. Now, look, girls. You're all married, ain't you? All except Dixie. <laughs> and you're all wearing wedding rings, except Dixie. Now, when you kick left, you kick with the leg on the same side as the wedding ring. All except Dixie. <laughs> now, let's try it once more, and then we'll... Mr. Nichols! Oh, uh, yeah, Dixie. Kind of hot up here on the stage with all them gas lights burning. Can we take a rest maybe for five minutes? Yeah, okay, okay, five minutes, girls. And while you rest and study up on which is your left foot, will you? Uh-oh, here comes Dixie, Scott, and looks like she's got something on her mind. Well, see you later. Well... Hello, Scott. Hello, Dixie. Sit down. Thanks. I saw it in the paper about you riding shotgun. Why didn't you tell me? Why do I have to read it in the I paper? I thought maybe you wouldn't like the idea. That kind of a job ain't for a man like you, Scott. Why ain't it? Look, Dix, this is pioneer country out here in the Dakotas. Law enforcement ain't all it should be yet. Somebody's got to see that the gold being dug here gets through to Cheyenne. All right. But why does it have to be you? I live here, don't I? I got a stake in this territory. What good's all this moving civilization westward, expanding the borders of the nation like the president said, unless law and order expand with it? You believe in civilization, don't you? Oh, sure. I believe in dying a natural death, too. Look, Dixie, a man comes out here, he brings his idea of what makes for a decent, peaceful life with him. He wants to get married and raise a family. He owes it to his future kids. Oh, uh, to... wait. Are you talking general or... Uh... You got some particular man in mind. I got me in mind, and you, too. You heard what Nichols said. You're the only girl in the chorus that ain't hitched. How are you ever going to know which is your left foot? <laughs> Scott, supposing you have trouble, or you find you don't like the job, will you go back to prospecting then? Will you? Sure, whatever you say, Dix. Oh, darling, don't get hurt. I'll be all right. And kiss me. Please. It's a pleasure, ma'am. All right, girls. Okay, Professor. Let her go. One, two, three. Hey, say, where's Dixie? Oh, for the love of... Dixie, that's enough, you two. Dixie. Dixie! <laughs> Well, the next day, bright and early, the steel-lined treasure coach loaded with gold bullion was on its way. Inside, sitting on the gold ingots, was a special guard hired by Wells Fargo. Where we got the story back in Deadwood, Bob Shipley was the driver, and Scott was sitting up there alongside him on the box, riding shotgun. Well, easy going so far, Scotty. What's that shack all the way down there in the valley ship? Stock tender's cabin. We changed horses there. If you look hard, you'll be able to make out the fresh team awaiting. I see him. What a lonely life that stock tender must live. What's his name? Search me. We call him the old timer. Don't think he's got a name. And lonely is right. Guess he'll be glad to see some visitors for a change. Get up there. Get up there. There's the fresh team all harnessed up and waiting over there by the cabin. Yeah, but where's the old man? Probably getting himself some supper. Hey, old timer! Old timer! Guess maybe his hearing ain't so good, huh? Oh, he can hear all right. Has he got a dog? Yeah, he's got a dog. Why? Well, where is he? Did you ever hear of a wagon driving up to a house where there's a dog and a dog didn't come out barking? Listen, Scott, I know what I'm doing, and hey, guard. You, inside the coach. Yeah, Shipley, what is it? Jump out and make a beeline for that cabin. Tell the old timer... I ain't supposed to leave my post, Ship. Them's my orders. I'm running this coach now, and I'm giving the orders. Wait a minute, Shipley. There's something funny. I don't like the looks of things around here. It's too quiet. Ah, what are you talking about? 
You, guard, get going over to that cabin. I'll hold the team, and Scott here will keep you covered with a shotgun. Now, them's orders. All right. Just keep me covered. That's all. Hey, old timer. Old timer, what's the matter? Don't you hear me? Scott, get down. Ambush. They're in the cabin. Who? What about the guard? They drilled him. Where are you crawling to? Top of the coach, so I can get a key. Who are you? Hold those horses still. I got him. Who? Who? Can you see who it is in the cabin? Blackburn's gang. I got one at the window. Ship, hold those horses. They're running away. Ship, what's the matter? I stopped a bullet, Scott. Right in here. Grab the reins. Hold on a minute longer. Hurry, Scott. They're pulling me. Hurry. Here, here I am, Ship. Hand them over. Scott. Scott. Answer me. Scott. I was sitting on the porch of the Regal Hotel in Deadwood, rocking away and wondering about Scott. And all of a sudden, the treasure coach tore up the street with a dead driver and a badly wounded shotgun rider hanging onto the rails. A few hours later, Scott was in his room, propped up on pillows, talking to Dr. McCabe. That's fine, Doc. I feel great. I can get up and walk right now. Yeah? That's what you think. Scott, there's a second bullet in your hip. We'll take it out tomorrow. Tomorrow? Why can't you do it today? What's your rush? What's your rush? What's your rush? You you ain't going anywhere. Listen, anywhere's. Doc, that Blackburn gang can't have got very far. The longer I wait, the further away they get. Oh. So you're going after Blackburn, hey? Yeah. Alone? The two men I'd like to take with me are dead. Help me get fixed up quick, will you, Doc? Well, do what I can, Scott. There's somebody I... I don't think it's going to be exactly crazy about your idea of going after Blackburn. Who? Dixie. She's been telling everybody you two are going to get hitched and head for the gold fields pronto. And from now on, she says, she ain't even going to let you carry a pistol. Well, she's waiting outside. I'll, I'll tell her to come in now. Come on in, Dixie. So long, Scott. Hello, dear. How do you feel today? All right. Um... How are things over at the dance hall, Dix? <laughs> the same. I still don't know which is my left foot. What you gonna do about that, Scott? Oh, you mean about uh, us uh, getting married right away? That's what I mean. Old Tom Durkin is teaching me how to pan gold. And you and me, we leave for the fields the minute your wounds heal up. Well, uh, about that, Dixie, I, uh, I'll have to rustle up a mining outfit first. I already arranged for the outfit. Oh, and uh, uh, you, you'll have to tell Nichols you're quitting your job. I already told him. Oh. Uh, well, maybe you shouldn't have done that, Dixie. I mean... Hey, uh, you haven't got cold feet on the proposition. You don't want to back out, do you? Who, me? Well, of course not. Why, was such a thing never in my... Listen, Dixie. Yes, Dixie, God. I got to tell you something about us. We, we can't get married yet. I knew it. The minute I walked into this room, I knew that Dixie, something... if you'll only listen... Listen? Uh... If I listen to one more word out of you, I'll tell you exactly what I think of a double cross and ring tail. No, I ain't gonna lower my dignity. I'm getting out of here. Wait a minute, Dixie. Come back here. Sit down. What for? The only thing I'd be interested in discussing with you, Mr. Davis, is crops and the weather. Look, Dixie, I want to marry you. Then what's stopping us? I got the license right here. But there, there's something important I got to do first. Something important. Dixie, I'm going after the Blackburn gang. After the... Why, Scott? Why? Because they killed two men entrusted to my care. Because, like I told you, this country out here won't be fit for no one to live in. And that includes you and me, unless these outlaws are driven out and law and order takes over. I see. Every time you run across somebody that... Holds contrary ideas, you're going after him with a shotgun. You've got a big job ahead, Scott. Dixie, I'm going to find Blackburn and Red Evans and bring them in to face justice. I'm not doing it for money or for Wells Fargo, but so I can sleep nights. And after I bring them in, right after, you and me will get married. Is it a deal? All right, Scott. But, oh, darling, take care of yourself. 
please. You're listening to The Cavalcade of America, presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight, our play is Ryden Shotgun, and starring in the role of Scott Davis is Ralph Bellamy. Jeanette Nolan is featured as his wife, Dixie, who is telling the story. Well, while I sat on the porch and rocked and worried, Scott Davis combed the hills trying to pick up Blackburn's trail. Led to a lonely cabin on the bank of the Sweetwater River. Yeah? What is it? I was just wondering, mister, if I could fill up my water canteen at your pump here. Come a long way and I've got Go a truck. right ahead. Thanks. Live all by yourself out here in the middle of nowhere, huh? I like it. I suppose nobody goes by this trail without you seeing them, huh? I saw you. Yeah. Um, you didn't happen to see anything of two men going by here about a week ago. What kind of looking man? Oh, one sort of chunky, with black hair turning gray, the other's red-headed. I saw him. He was heading east toward South Pass City. That's about three days from here. Did you, uh, want him for something? Well, yes, I guess you might say I wanted them for something. Hello there, son. Hello, mister. Hey, you mind telling me where I am? What place is this? South Pass City, mister. Ah, quite a big town. Only where is everybody? They ain't here. They're gone. Gone? Where? They don't live here no more. All them houses are empty. See how the windows are all busted? A ghost town, huh? What happened? Gold vein run dry? Yep. And all the prospectors lit out. We would have, too, only my uncle is sick with lumbago in the back. Can't move around, Greg. Eddie! Eddie! That's him coming over now. Eddie! Who's this you're talking to? I don't know, Uncle. A man. Ah. Uh. You looking for someone, mister? Oh, just passing through. Well, don't let me hold you up. Um, I was just wondering. You didn't see anything of two men, one red-headed, going through here a couple of days ago, did you? Two men? No. No, I can't say as I did. Sure, Uncle, we seen them. What? You gave him supper night before last. You're crazy, boy. You must have dreamt it. I ain't crazy, Uncle. Don't you remember? You dreamt that I said. Just like you're always dreaming things. But I didn't, and I ain't crazy. That's all right, boy. Nothing to get uh, upset about. Everybody has dreams. And your uncle ought to know whether he's seen a person or not. Sure, I ought. By the way, mister, can you lend me your bucket? I'd like to water my horse. Yeah. One over there back at the barn. Eddie will get it for you. Sure, mister. I'll Don't bring bother, it. boy. I'll bring the horse over there. Come on. You and me can water them together. All right. I'll pump you. Sure is a nice looking horse, mister. Here, horse, here's your water. Eddie, listen. I'm gonna talk to you like you was a grown man. I'm gonna tell you something very important to me, and then I want you to tell me something. Me? Golly. Eddie, my name is Scott Davis. I'm shotgun rider on the treasure coach. You are? Holy smoke. Listen. Two weeks ago, the coach was held up. Two men were killed, and a shotgun rider wounded. That was me. Holy smoke! I'm after the two outlaws that killed my friends. Now listen, son. I don't believe you dreamt that thing about the two men having supper with your uncle. I know you saw him. You did, didn't you? Sure, I saw him. They thought I was sleeping. Now think carefully. Which trail did they take? The one to Smithtown or the one to Green River? The one to Green River. I heard them talking outside Thanks, the window. Thanks, son. And after I catch him and bring him back to Deadwood, I'm coming back here and make you a present of this horse. You mean you're going to give him to... Holy smoke! Hey, mister. Wake up. Wake up. Uh, what's that? Well, you ain't dead. That's something. 
What are you doing to sleep out here in these hills? Uh, guess I must have fainted. Falling off the horse. Fainted? Well, who ever heard of a grown man? Hey, you're bleeding there. Uh, old wound. Opened up from being in the saddle so long, I guess. Oh? That's when I keeled over. Well, a man must have a pretty good reason for traveling with a bullet hole like that in him. What'd you say your name was? Scott Davis. Scott Davis, eh? So you're not the shotgun rider from Deadwood. Yes, who... I am. Well, what in tarnation are you doing all the way up in this part of the territory? Looking for somebody. Oh? Couldn't be the two men that held up the coach now and killed your pals, could it? Might. You didn't happen to run across them up here, did you? Yeah. I reckon I did. What? Where? When did you now, see him? Now, just him? take it easy, son. You ain't in no condition I'm to be... I'm all right, dead. I tell you. Where did you see him? Come on, speak up. Well, it was two of them about an hour ago. One with red hair That's and... That's them? It... Where? Where did you see him? Well, them? in the abandoned shack, about half a mile to the other side of my Half plate. a mile? You mean straight ahead along this trail? Straight ahead. So long, Charlie. Thanks. Blackburn, your hands up. You too, Red. Come on in and get me, Davis. Get Davis. Come on in. Red. Red, did he? Red. Red. Well, well, so I got old Red. You coming out now, Blackburn? Like I said, you'll have to come in after me, Davis. I will when you're dead. Sure, Blackie. Here I am. Come to the window and take a look. Come on. You're not going to let old Red down, are you? I killed him, Blackie. I killed your pal. He's expecting you to... That was for old ship, the driver, Blackie. You look a little like him now. Hanging half out of that window. I'm coming in now, Blackie. Well, hello, Scott. Hello, Dixie. Pick yourself a rocker and sit down. <clears throat> Thanks. Well, kind of nice to see you around again. Uh, got anything uh, on your mind? Dixie, the Wells Fargo man told me this morning they're giving me a reward for getting Blackburn a thousand dollars. A thousand? My goodness. Dixie lets you and me get hitched right away, huh? I mean, right away. You giving up riding shotgun? Anything you say, Dix, only let's do it right away, huh? Of course, darling. Only you got to give a girl a little time to get some things together. I think maybe by next Saturday... Next Saturday? Look, Dix, how about this afternoon, huh? This afternoon? Scott Davis, you got any underhanded reasons for this rush act? Dixie, how could... Well, of course not. Why, well, it's only about... I mean, gosh, honey, do I have to say why? Certainly. I am a woman, ain't I? All right. Dixie, I guess maybe I'm in love with you. And such being the case, there ain't no point in not getting the darn hitching ceremony over with pronto. There, satisfied? Oh, darling. You talk almost like poetry sometimes. Of course I'll marry you this afternoon. And tomorrow we can start for the gold fields. Hello, and... Scott. Hi, Dixie. Uh, seen the paper? No, Mr. Nichols. What's in it? Listen to this. Notice to bullion shippers. The autumn cleanup of gold bullion will leave for Cheyenne on the treasure coach Wednesday. Scott Davis will ride shotgun. Scott Davis Why, will... that old coyote, he promised me he wouldn't put that in the paper until tomorrow. So that's why you... You double-crossing... Scott Davis, I wouldn't marry you if you... I better get out of here before I oh, forget wait a minute, Dixie, lady. please. Now, I can explain everything. Dixie, Dixie, Dixie! Well, 
Well, that was Scott. He knew the thing that was important to him, and he did it. Only yesterday, my grandchildren came back from a motor trip through the West. They showed me pictures they took of monuments to railroad men and empire builders and such. There's no monument out here in the Dakotas to Scott Davis. Not a one. But he wanted a frontier of law and order. And that was important. Now his memory lingers on, locked up in the hearts of a few old timers like me. Scott Davis, my husband, the best shotgun rider the Dakota Territory ever saw. Our thanks to our star Ralph Bellamy and to Jeanette Nolan and our cast of supporting players for tonight's story, Riding Shotgun. Now, Bill Hamilton speaking for the DuPont Company. The words of our DuPont pledge, better things for better living through chemistry, really mean something. They stand for facts. And tonight we want to tell you some facts about Fabrolite plastic sheeting, a new and better upholstery material developed by chemical science. As you're listening to this program, are you sitting on a sofa or a chair? Well, look down at the arm. Is it upholstered? Well, for hundreds of years, a manufacturer was limited in the materials he could use to cover a chair. There was cloth, leather, cane, and horsehair. Then, chemical science developed a new one, coated fabric, cloth treated with plastic. You see an increasing amount of furniture upholstered with this chemically made material in homes, theaters, hotels, restaurants, taverns, wherever furniture gets hard wear. It can take a lot of punishment, and the clear, bright colors, gay as a flower bed in midsummer, are easy to keep clean. This year, a new type of plastic upholstery, developed by the DuPont Company, was introduced to professional buyers of furniture. Our DuPont trademark for this supported plastic sheeting is Fabrolite. This Fabrolite material is something brand new in plastic upholstery. Plastic sheeting supported by a cotton fabric back. Retail buyers like its luxurious feel and sleek new look. Manufacturers like its advantages in sewing, tacking, padding, and forming without special handling. This new DuPont Fabrolite is one more improvement developed by scientific research. It is one more item added to the ever-increasing number of our DuPont Better Things for Better Living through Chemistry. Tonight's cavalcade play, Riding Shotgun, was written by Arthur Arendt. It was suggested by incidents in the book The Black Hills by Robert J. Casey, published by Bob's Merrill. The music for the DuPont cavalcades, composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Voorhees. Ralph Bellamy is currently starring in the Broadway hit Detective Story. This is Ted Pearson speaking. Next week, Cavalcade has an unusual story. It's about a Chinese immigrant. His name is Su Chan, and he found in the American way of life a happiness and success that surpassed his boyhood dreams in the land of his ancestors across the Pacific. In next week's Cavalcade, the homecoming of Su Chan will present the popular motion picture and radio star of the Fred Allen Show, Kenny Delmar. And in addition, we have a surprise. So be sure to listen next week to Cavalcade. Cavalcade of America is directed by John Zoller. Comes to you each week from the stage of the Long Acre Theater on Broadway in New York and is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.